Welcome back, everyone. We're taking a look at some of the calls of the day today, starting with AMC. Wedbush is lowering its price target on the movie theater company for or to two dollars from four dollars and reiterating its underperform rating after launching its preferred shares okay so even more of a bearish sentiment from some of the fundamentals trackers two dollars <laughs> i was like i had to look at the stock price i mean I just <laughs> wow uh that's almost like a bet that you know the movie theater business is going to almost go completely under i mean i get it's going to be under pressure here i think as you like we talked about yesterday with the cine world uh bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy what does that mean for the industry at large but I mean, that fourth quarter movie slate is, is looking pretty good for the industry. But at the same time, I, I, you have to wonder how much of the valuation that is baked into the stock has to do with any of that, right? Mm -hmm. How much of it is financial engineering? How much of it is hype? And how much of it is the actual business? Now, I'm not an analyst. I don't do financial modeling. So I don't know what the answer to that is, but I think it's pretty difficult to suss it out. Right, and if you're looking at it on the traditional financial modeling, to your point, you would have to weave in everything from concession sales to actual little ticket sales, and those concession sales for the holistic experience, you have to think are going to continue to be um, alarming at this point because of the experience itself being so much more costly than somebody just paying $7 a month or $15 a month for an entire streaming subscription. And so if any individual consumer is trying to look at where their experience costs are going out the door, a movie theater experience doesn't necessarily seem like the most cost conscious thing to do right now. Mm. If you're going to pay $90 for the family to go see a movie, and that's perhaps just in your tickets, depending upon where you're going right, to see it, too. Right, not even your popcorn. Uh, I want to see Tom Cruise, 150-inch uh, Tom Cruise to on Tom the screen. Cruise. I need to see me some Tom Cruise, Top Gun. Well, you saw it. Well, I go to see it again? Now it's done. <laughs> Would you, though? Yeah, and, you know, actually, I, I, don't, I don't really have any family, per se, to take to the movie, so I'm good. I don't have to pay $100, so it's just, you know. Well, then you can go to iPad. Sad, but true. There. Sad, but true. Yeah. yeah. That's true, which is not an AMC chain, so yeah. there you go. Um, let's talk about another call. <laughs> Grocery Outlet is facing a downgrade to underweight from equal weight. That's over at Morgan Stanley. The analyst there says the stock has gotten ahead of its fundamentals and cited downside risk to the discount grocer's 2023 estimates. Now, this is interesting here, um, and it seems like it's from Simeon Gutmann over there. It seems to be mostly to do with a valuation issue. Essentially, as we have talked about, some of the discount grocers are well positioned in this this environment here. Um, and he doesn't necessarily say that it's not, but that the stock is getting ahead of fundamentals in the word of the note and that the flow through may underwhelm and that uh, the expectations and the estimates for 2023 look too high. I mean, this is stock that's actually done relatively well, right, in, in this environment. So a, a lot of this just has to do with looking at how the stock has done and whether it reflects the fundamentals. Yeah, there's there's a lot to take in from from any grocery outlet or any food kind of product related company. And I think there's a lot of overlap actually between the grocery outlet holding company as well as what we had seen even from kind of drawing a parallel with Dole and the report that they put out this morning too. And really citing how they need to navigate about getting product even to the right store locations and how that's an increased cost for them. And then ensuring as well with some of the, the broader concerns just around climate that they're also navigating through too, ensuring that they can have enough of the produce to service customers right now. That's a continuous headwind that anybody who's in the grocery business has to also be concerned about um, and continues to pay up to make sure that they have enough of the shipments getting to the right place at the right time, too. You ever been to one of these? I've never even seen a grocery. I've, I've never been to one, no. I have no. not either. No. All right. Well, uh, one store that I have been to, in fact, we've been covering all week, and that is Kohl's. <laughs> We're still watching these shares after the retailer got some encouragement yeah, look at that. from Jeffries, friend of the show, uh, 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 Steph Wissing, coming out here. Somewhat favorable in her rating, but if you drill down in, into Steph's uh, note here, she's actually reframing her, her outlook for profit margins on coal. She's now at 4% near term, uh, with margins potentially going back to 6% over time. So just a more cautious outlook for sales and margins here for coals, as you probably should be doing, uh, because the company just has a lot of inventory at stores, like we've been talking about, under severe margin pressure. The sales are not where they need to be. So again, that's Stephanie here coming out with, I think, a more realistic outlook for Kohl's. It's, it's got too much inventory. It's got too much square footage and overhead that it has yes. to account for. And I think for the partnership that they've been able to strike, that, that's great for their beauty partner in Sephora. But 
at the end of the day, too, you have to imagine for the companies that have already moved out of Kohl's and, um, and decided where to pull back on the amount of inventory that they will wholesale into them because of their brand image that they're trying to maintain, what kind of net impact that has on Kohl's and the customer relationship if they don't believe they can go in there and get the product from the name brand mm. that they've come to expect over the years? You a Kohl's fan, Julie? No Kohl's? I mean, there aren't any Kohl's around for I don't know the last time I've been to, Kohl's. to so okay. I'm not really Just curious. I, I don't I'm not really a department I haven't been a department store person mm -hmm. post pandemic really. You're not missing much of Kohl's.